Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can work inside CAMWorks with a SolidWorks assembly and how you can use that assembly to define your work holding or your fixturing. So let's start by looking at the part we have on screen here. It's a very complex part, many different operations in the left menu. I've programmed it in part mode, mainly because that's going to be the easiest way to do your programming. You know where your part is, where your features are, you can run your automatic feature recognition pretty easily, and then it saves it to the cam part file as part mode. Now, this doesn't show the fixturing, this doesn't show how this is going to sit on your machine in terms of offsets. What this is for is just the simplicity of programming the part. But once we take this into assembly mode, that's where all those additional bits of information, how that sits on the machine and what work holding we're going to use comes into play. So let's take this into assembly mode. First, what you want to do is with your part open, with already programmed, already added to it, you can go to file and Make assembly from part. Now what this will do is this is a SOLIDWORKS functionality, but now it takes this individual part and makes it the main part in an assembly. You can see that there's a little yellow block following my mouse. What I want to do here is just add it to this assembly. So I'm just going to go to the top right here and just click on the green check mark. And that just places that part that we just imported from part mode into this assembly mode and it centers it on the assembly's origin. Now this is not in, uh, entirely important, but it's just an easy way to just get it on screen and then it's centered in this assembly rather than floating somewhere else in space. Now that you have the part there, if you want to bring in any additional solids, any additional models that represent your work holding, this is the time to do it because you're still in, inside of assembly mode. So we can go up to assembly, insert components, and I actually have two components that I want to add here. The first is an actual fixture that we would have to make to hold this thing inside my vise. Now it's just a really simple fixture. This is a cylindrical part. I just need some locations on this thing. So I'm just going to add some mates to this solid to my main part. And then that way I can lock it in space. And what I'm referring to there is if you take a look in the left menu, the original part has a little F next to it. This thing's fixed in space. And, you can, and the software tells you that. Essentially, this is the anchor for the assembly. Everything else can move until I anchor it or I mate it to the main part. So I'm just going to do that real quick here by going up to mate. And the best way to think of mates is you just need three stops on this part. So let's start by basically making these threaded hole concentric with our model. It's facing the wrong direction, so I'll just get them to face the same direction just by clicking on that mate alignment. And that just makes sure that this thing is now centered because in real life, I'm going to use some sort of bolt to hold that thing in place. Likewise, our part would sit on the fixture on that face. So I'll just click on that face and this face right here, and it makes them coincident, meaning that that is now sitting on screen there. Now, again, the centered part, the main part is fixed in space. This guy is not fixed until I uh, assign it to something on our part file. And that something is just going to be basically that face right there. So that face and that face, because in real life, that's how that would mate. That's how that would locate on our part. So we have that simple piece of fixture there. If I grab that, it'll also tell me that that can't move, but now it's fully defined. And that little empty bracket is missing because now it's a, uh, mated, it's anchored to the main part. We can even go a little further and let's add in a assembly, a SOLIDWORKS assembly that I would have got from a work holding supplier. In this case, my self-centering vice. Now, same sort of thing. It's gonna follow my mouse until I tell it where I want it to be on screen. I'm just gonna click anywhere away from my part because I want to anchor this to the components already on screen. So we'll do something similar. We're just gonna go and grab this edge right here because the way that this thing works is it has a little bit of a dovetail on it. So I'm just gonna make sure that that edge is mated to that edge right there. So we'll take that edge and we'll mate it to this edge right here. And again, because our part is anchored, everything moves relative to the part. So that looks like those lined up pretty nice. And with bringing in a SOLIDWORKS assembly like this, especially this sort of one that has its own components, the best way to work with vices or vice assemblies you get from your work holding is to right click on it and tell it that it's flexible. Because otherwise you would not be able to move the jaws. In real life, this thing, the jaws would move until it locks in on our part. So this is the easiest way to mate a SOLIDWORKS assembly of a vise to your part.
So we'll go back to mate, and I'll just mate the other dovetail edge to the other dovetail side, right here. And that just moves everything in place there. And with the, with the sub-assembly, with the vice assembly flexible, it moved the jaws so that it can literally hold that in place. Now that just keeps all that lined up. This guy can still slide. So what we need to do is tell it that we want it to maybe just be centered in this part. Now there's nothing really on here to get it to be centered. We could add in some dimensions. We could use this dimensional value right here in our uh, our mates. But an even simpler way when working with vice assemblies or any kind of work holding where you want to center it, if we go to advanced, there's a mate called width. And this one's very easy to use because it's basically what you're thinking of. You want to make sure that between this face and this face of the vise, you have centered this face and this face of the part or that fixture right there. And that just centers it in between those two faces. So it's in the advanced tab, but it's not very, really advanced. It's just very simple and it just centers it for you. Okay, and likewise, if we take a look at the left menu, that guy now longer, no longer has an empty bracket, and that is also constrained in space. So that is on the SOLIDWORKS side, how you can make an assembly that represents all your work holding and your part. Now if we jump to CAMWORKS, let's get this thing up to, up to date here with our information. So I'm going to make this an inch model, which means that when I go to my machine, I can now tell it it's a 5-axis machine which should automatically choose my five axis post. And my setup, this is assembly mode. We might have multiple parts on a table, or in our case, we might have multiple parts that represent both parts and work holding. So when I set up my fixture coordinate system, I can set it up off of any one of these solids. And in this case, I'm assuming that on my table, my vice is sitting right on the table. So I'm just gonna use that as my origin and my Z axis. I'll choose the back face and then just flip it. So more or less, that's how I would set it up on my machine. The coordinate system, my work holding, is offset from my part. Now this is just fixture coordinate system. This is just telling it how this overall assembly sits on the part. It's when I go into my operation tree that I'll actually give it my, my work offset, my G54. And we'll take a look at that once we get something on screen here. So let's get that on screen. So if we go to Part Manager, right click, Manage Parts, this screen is just asking us what is the actual solid on screen, what model on screen represents what we're actually machining. So it's this part right here. And that's it. Now if I had more than one part, I can click on sort instances. I can get it to add every copy of that part if I'm doing multiple parts on my table. But in this case, we're just doing one. Since the part was already pre-programmed in part mode, I don't have to do any programming here. It almost would be a waste of time to reprogram it if I already did it in part mode. All I have to do is just right click on the part, import part data, and it'll just bring in all the existing data from the previous part in part mode. And this is why this makes it a little easier to program a part of any type of axis, four, five, or three and a half, two and a half. Essentially, it makes it easier to program in part mode and then import it into assembly mode, mainly because it's easier to run the AFR. You can add as many offsets in many directions as you want. Once you get into assembly mode, and you've defined how it's being work held, then you can trim the fat. You can trim all the operations that would not be possible in this setup. And that's essentially what just happened here. So by adding in that cam data, you can see that it added all my offsets, all my, my, my setups for my part. It's gonna bring this part up to date using the data imported from the cam part file in part mode. And now you can see that all the operations were also imported. Since we have a new set of work holding, we're inside of a new setup, a new, possibly even a new machine was selected. The operations are uncalculated. All that means is we just need to do a generate toolpath. But before we do that, let's add those work holding. So for every one of these machine setups, we have a definition. And in that de definition, that's where you can give it your work offset and you can assign your fixturing. So let's start with that work offset. So if we go to Part Setup Origin, you'll see that it uses the setup from my part file. Now, if we didn't want to use that, we could modify the Setup Origin with any one of these, uh, these uh, different uh, options in here. But Part Setup Origin imports the one from the part file. Again, we've already pre-programmed the part. 
Let's just use that. Under offset, this is where we can tell it that we're working under work coordinate G54. And for the fixturing, we'll go to the fixtures tab and we'll just select the solids that represent the fixture. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just click on them on screen. But of course, you could have also gone to the SolidWorks feature tree and added those as well. Now with those defined, let me just calculate one of these operations and we'll go into simulation. And then from there, you can see that in our simulation, it includes the fixture definitions. So we can use those for a collision detection. We can include those fixture definitions inside the operations themselves for collision detection and avoidance. So working in assembly mode adds on top of the functionality inside CamWorks. Part, program your parts in part mode to get all the features and get all the operations and all the tooling set. And then when you import that into assembly mode, that's where you can define how it sits on the machine and what fixtures you're using on the machine. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call on the main tech line. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.